Welcome back to Two Love Rue Anime Review Part 8. This one's got in the first four episodes of the second season of the series of Two Love Rue, known as Mato Two Love Rue. This one, like the first season, is actually having us where all the episodes, not just a handful of them like it was in the first season, where they're actually pretty faithful to the source material. Each episode is adapted mostly, not exactly in order per se. They do keep that format from the original series, from the first season of the show. But these are the chapters they adapted. For episode one, they adapt chapters 49, 74, 80, 70, is actually two parter, and 107. Two is 54, 75, 76, and 146. Three is 106, 109, 120. And four is 61, 105, and 108. Yep. Yeah, that's what I adapted here. Now, the thing with these episodes is that they're all pretty much multiple segment episodes. And the thing is, one thing you got to at least kind of be interesting to know about these episodes is that these segments are exactly seven minutes and they adapt just usually about two or three chapters a piece. And they vary in quality basically how they, what order they adapt them. Now, basically, because there's these segments, so basically, in four episodes, we've already, uh, I've already pretty much covered, at least watch, anyways, about twelve segments. Yes, the first segment is one more from here. Yeah, this is adapted from chapter forty-nine. Mostly put, it's exactly the same, just reminiscing about basically the start of this series. That's mostly put what it was, just while we were running late for school. And also him her using this this warp thing. She does actually another time in another episode. And when he uses it, she he lands right under her on a skirt. It's like why in the world he would end up there? No idea. Of course he gets smacked for his shovel. It's basically a deterministic part. Or at the bath. This comes from chapters 87, 88, this one. Where like pretty much like some of the girls, basically you have Lala Mankin. Y Yami, yeah, she comes along. Yeah, just these four. Oh, yeah, and Harden is here, too. And, of course, Rito tags along to go to the public bath. Because it's a Japanese anime. Of course they would have a public bath episode. Because, like, almost a lot of the anime I've watched generally have these things. The only one, surprisingly, never had one of these type of episodes was Bleach. Yes, and of all the anime I watch, Bleach is one of the very few that never have these at all. Which I'm like, really? You're set in modern Japan and yet you don't have a public bath episode? Yep. But this mostly plays about two guys who wanted to blackmail Yumi to see her naked. By the way, fun fact, she's appeared naked several times over the course of the series. And never got a chance to see her naked at all. Yep. And so, the way they try to do it is they actually put the vice on Rito's head in order to see her naked. Of course, she punched him in the gut, though a lot of times don't harm him. And, of course, well, eventually Mikin, who basically starts a friendship with her in this thing. Yeah, this is something that does basically, it's a plot thread that they spend with the whole episodes. That actually start with the OVAs, where Mikin and Yumi become very close friends. I mean, it seems as though Miki kind of looks at Yami as sort of like a older sister in a way. Even though she looks like she's slightly older than she is. Though, they make jokes about her chest size, basically, the whole series. Like, it's a minor gag in the series about her chest size. Or how short she is. Well, that's, the height is basically never really brought very much. One thing it is a recurring gag of how cute she is. Yes. That's the thing with Yumi. A deadly assassin is described as being cute. Oh yeah, and she and her tagline is "I hate perverted things." <laughs> yep, and she and her com and her common target be beat up is of course Rito. Yep, and of course Mikin does find the guys really easily. Yeah, just run, run, just happen to run past them. Well, they're hiding in of all places a freaking trash can of all things. So you have Mikin just kick the thing and says, la la, they're over here. <laughs> yep. And then she comes in her outfit. Yeah, by the way, she spends almost this thing basically naked. 
And lucky enough, thanks to basically using Rito, they take him out and Yumi doesn't do anything. It's a nice segment. Yep. The third one basically also features... Now, the first... Also, I should I'll point out that for the first thing is that basically Rito does this thing where he gets flown around accident by, by Lala. First, he lands on at Yumi, and then, of course, he ends up back with Lala. Yeah, Yumi appears a lot in these episodes. It's always great to see this character, though I kind of miss her English dub actress. Yep. So, mostly put when it comes to the third one, it's, I believe this is taken from chapter 107, where it focuses on you. Yes, that's her name, you. Where she's the head of display, it's all about display actions, and of course she had, the thing with this one is that she has a conversation with Yumi about romance. And the fact that there's a possible thing started here that she may actually be in love with Rito. I mean, several other women basically. I mean, I mean the only woman who have been confirmed in the series at this point who have a thing for Rito is just Lala, Haruna, and Run. They're the only three who do know, who with the viewers do know. This one kind of starts implying the fact she might have a thing for him, but it doesn't go much in places at all. I mean, he doesn't. He's never felt an interest. Of course, he does occasionally prefer to things to her by complete accident. Oh yeah, it's also about deducting points and what. That's really what it's mainly about. This thing was. It's called Tick Tock Tick Tock, the sound of love. It's a weird one. Yep. All right. The first now for one hundred two. This is those warped mid starters. Once again, they use the warp thing. So, apparently, that for some reason, Lala leaves the gadgets on the school floor. I would think that maybe the janitor is, hey, why in the world is there, is there a strange device that's on the, on the hallway floor? Like, like she's, it's like this thing is her bedroom. <laughs> I'm not sure why in the world she did this for, but she did. And, of course, well, Vito knows the fact that Lala's ventures tend to do weird things, so... Harna acts. Uh, she picks up one, one of the devices. This is the warp one, and once again, Rito is warped. Though this time, Lala is not with it. It's actually Harna, and once again, he's completely naked, and so is Harna. I believe in the case of Harna, he's seen her naked a few times in the course of the series, but this is the first time a whole episode, whole segment, basically, where he's with her naked. They're just undisclosed location. It's not revealed until the end of the segment of where the heck they are. And, like, the wind, and of course, they're in darkness. The first thing he grabbed is Harna's chest. Of course, he, he does smack him for it. Of course, she does a few times when he actually did some perverted to her. Eventually, he got covered up, put some sheets on him. And eventually, it's found out, though, this is actually in Makito's, the basement of her clinic. Yes, for some reason, they actually changed where the clinic was. I thought this was, I kind of thought this was actually changed from the, from the manga anime. No, this is straight from the manga. No really big change here. I thought it was kind of weird, though, that, that she tried to change location from look like a back alley basement into look like an actual full-functioning clinic. It looks like it's based out of an old church. That's what it looks like to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in case you're curious, though, is there any real major change here? Not really, no. The second and third segments of this one actually kind of lead to each other, so it's actually quite interesting. Welcome to Yugi Household. This one is basically... Lala inviting Yumi over to, well, Rito's house. I believe this is the first time she's ever been to his house because she wants to try the potted stew. And they decided to invite Haruna. Okay. So they invite her over and they have some food and then they decide to have, like, it's like, okay, since they don't have school tomorrow, have a slumber party. <laughs> so Rito decides to go up and get himself a bath first. <coughs> and apparently the girls did not even know this, so he was in there. So the bath gets transformed from a small bathroom into a gigantic bathroom. Yep, a bathroom. Oh, in case you're curious, now in case you're curious, like where's Lala's sisters in these episodes? Well, they're not in the first two episodes at all. Nope, they actually do not show up until I think it's um like I think it's like the last segment of episode four when they finally show up. Mm -hmm. So, 
the whole like little thing of like once once again you you means naked. This is the second time in this series that she's naked. Like everybody's naked, even Meekin. And well, of course, <laughs> the thing is transferred back to Noah Bath when Pooh decides to accidentally hit the button that basically device that Lala used to transform. This is actually one of the few times a gadget actually works. Makes the bathroom a lot more bigger than it is, which that's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep, and let's see what else. Well, of course, Yumi Rito gets beaten up. Like, like, well, how'd you win? When'd you get in here? He's like, I wasn't here before you. You, 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 you girls came in, and that's where the thing ends. Quite funny. This one really enjoyable. Once again, Yumi basically continue to make appearances. Yep. Now, next one is basically more segments. First up, Magic Love Potion. Yes, Yui is sick. This one is actually the first one they actually make changes, believe it or not. Yes, they actually make actual changes. Which, this is quite interesting. Basically, Rito basically is given like, Hey, can you take these home to Yui because she was home sick? And it would cut to Yui. Now, un now here's the thing. There's actually a change here from the manga. Because when we cut to her, she's already unbuttoning her shirt and she takes her arm and her temperature in her armpit, which I've had my temperature taken before. You just put it in the mouth. Though one time I had temperature taken my butt for some reason. That was how big that happened when I was a little kid. It's something I don't really want to delve into of why in the world the temperature was put there, but it was. But normally, put a temperature goes to your mouth, not much in your armpit. <clears throat> Nothing I can think of anyways. Because, well, that's... Of course, that was probably because she's got the cold. And this is probably like, okay. So, the brother is there. He's actually in college. And, of course, Rita comes over. Like, he wants to give you papers to him. So, he gives you... He's like, nah, come inside. Give it to yourself. And then, of course, that you... And, of course, Yui decides to just take a bath. Well, basically, wash herself while she's in bed. And, of course, Rita comes in... And he does apologize for basically, of course, he does hit her like, he does, she does him like usual. And basically explains why he's there. And there's more hints to the fact that she's got a thing for him. So it's like, oh, you got a thing for cats? Cool. And of course, he gets the notes and they're there for a while. And then a lot of the rest of the girls show up. And I love the fact they kind of rearrange stuff here, which I thought was quite interesting. Yep. <clears throat> but this was actually a fun segment. And another thing for. Yui to do. Mm hmm. Yep. So, next one is basically about the x ray glasses. Yep. This is a thing from the manga. It's only one chapter. They do make actually some. This is another one that makes some changes. Basically, mostly is the same, except for the last little segment here. Though, the biggest change to make to the last one is that when Yui shows off her chest here, so there's actually like a blinding light, basically, whenever they show off like a woman. There's actually a censoring in this one. Where if a woman's breasts are shown like fully, or like before, they're shown perfectly fine. Here, let's just have a shining light on it. They even do the same thing for a woman's groin. I am not kidding. But apparently, they have no problem with showing off the rear end, but I get the groin. Okay, fine. But the breasts are normally something they normally show uncensored. Why the heck the breasts censored for? I have no idea. So, the glasses he found randomly in Lava's room, which apparently is based out of his uh, Rito's closet. That apparently is the interest of the damn thing. Which, not the first time those doors have been open, because a lot of the time when that room is shown, the door is always closed. This is only the second time I've ever seen the series, actually a third time, where the doors were actually open. The first time they were open was when Saki broke into the house. Yep. And he just ran these glasses, ran on the floor, puts them on, like, oh. And then, of course, Mika comes in. You probably thinking, wait, why is she in her underwear? Oh, it's the glasses. Yeah, and then the whole time he keeps seeing all these beautiful. And then he runs to Lisa and the other girl. He's like, she says, they're black. He's, he's like, what? <laughs> and then he sees. Hard enough, which they do a bit of censoring with her for some reason, despite the fact in the manga, it just seeing her underwear, she's not naked. And he runs away, and then he's in school, and then Ren shows up, and you see her in her underwear. This they did not censor, 
and then they see her, then he just switches the device, and now she's completely naked. Yep, she's completely naked. And he runs around and sees, well, Saki, her group. Yeah, also Saki apparently has, has basically stopped obsessing over Yuki. Well, basically Rito. Now she's obsessed with Zestin. Why in the world that she's obsessed with this guy? I have no idea. So, like, like he basically won't turn her calls. And he falls right on top of her and then he runs away like, like usual. Then pretty much, like... And then he's outside, running away, and of course he runs into Yui. Then eventually, Lola finally shows up at school and explains, Oh yeah, this thing does do x-ray, but it's mostly just x-ray of inside of robots. And try to take it off. Now, in the anime, they actually make another change. Yes, having run on top of Rito, and then Rito's basically seeing her, well, in her birthday suit, that when she sneezes back into the male form, Basically, he sees something he should not see at all. I'm not going to say what he does see because in the manga, she was standing up. In the anime, they were like, she was like right on top of him. Yes. Now, the last one. Oh boy, this one. I was not really a big fan of this one. It was basically like, well, apparently that Sariyama has felt an attraction to. Lala, despite the fact that Lala is in love with Rito. So, in order to get out of having a date with him, have Rito turn to Rico again. First time since the Virgil OVA. And if you're curious, though, is this one actually faithful to Sword Material? The answer is yes. There is actually no change here. It's mostly about them going on sort of dates, like movie stuff like that. I think it's like, oh yeah, I got a double. Like, okay, new girlfriend. It's a completely pointless segment. Nothing really to see here. This one. Excuse me. Next one. These ones all come from actual chapters in the manga. <clears throat> yeah, though they do make. I should point out though, they actually do kind of have a thing where, in the case of Wonderful Love, this one actually does show. That apparently it's applied to Makoto, the 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 nurse. Apparently she's the one who gave in the art, gave or urgent her artificial body, Urzu, but they don't really say here. Oh, I forgot to talk about this one. Okay, yeah, the Yumi House the one that's before the sleeper one. So. My kid's teacher comes over, and this is still faithful to the manga, except they actually made another change this one. So, the teacher's coming over to meet the father, who apparently she's a big fan of his manga. So, have Rito dress up like him, because, well, he's the son. And it's most of the same, except that they have him get drunk off of a particular juice that he's basically forced on chest. So, he ends up opening up the top of the teacher... And then he accidentally pulls down Makin's short. Yeah, pulls down his own sister's shorts. And the way it's implied in the anime that, oh, that apparently she's not wearing any panties. Despite the fact in manga, she clearly is. I'm not really sure why in the world they made that change for. Yeah, as far as I can tell, there's no real reason for this at all. Yeah. I don't think was any of them this year. Oh yeah, we'll get to that one. Mm -hmm. Yumi fashion is simply put, everybody runs Yumi and basically have put on different clothes, and well. <laughs> They go to a store and mostly put it's the same. Not really much change this one. Yeah, in the case of these three, no really major changes with these ones. Uh, not that I could think of, no. So, Yumi betrays on normal clothes and she, and they describe looking really cute. I think she looks pretty good in the clothes. And they come across some thugs, basically. And the, the tagline the line is, Well, look at these perverts from the last century. <laughs> okay. So... Yumi beats up off screen, apparently tears her skirt, and then she just puts on the clothes again. 
like apparently she had developed a interest in reading about Earth clothes. Also, I found this quite interesting. That's just, this is a minor change in the manga, where the clothes, the a magazine she's looking at, these are clothes designed by Rito's mother, who's a fashion designer, and that's the reason why she's actually allow a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, there was actually one I went involving. Where is that one? Oh yeah, the Yui one basically is having a romance. There's a thing where. Basically, where Rito just happens to run into her by sheer coincidence. And she says, like, why are you here? Your house isn't around here. Like, oh, yeah, I'm basically living art supplies, my dad, because he's a manga artist. Now, in the manga, it seems like she's quite surprised to hear that. In the anime, apparently, she already knew that. Yeah, I guess that's the reason why they changed it, because they won't have a shock expression on the face of, of basically you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yumi Fashion, back to that one. This one's actually a pretty good one. Wonderful Love. This one is... This is quite interesting. Harna is getting stalked by this mysterious person. So, she just runs to Ochro, who basically is so scared of dogs. I'm not really sure why she's scared of dogs. For I think maybe she was killed by a dog. I'm not really sure what the thing is. So... So, look at it just by sheer coincidence. Rito and Lala just visit visit Mikkel's clinic for reasons and so they, they hear about uh, her not being stuck so have Lala do a body swap with her yep a body swap and they do find out who what this person is and there's a funny bit like oh yeah because well because Laharna basically is quite physically very weak so and I got Orchard is all the beating up the person and it turns out it's a dog alien. A female dog alien who apparently fell for Hara's dog. Like, what? So, Arturo's response is to basically throw a bunch of objects at her. Yeah, it's a female one. And just end up in the hospital. Like, okay, it's... It's somewhat pointless ending. But it's okay. It's nothing really might write home about. Aside from fact, oh, we got a new device. It's nothing really progressing the story very much. Yeah, it doesn't progress hard enough very much, or even outro. It progresses nobody, just complete pointless story. Yumi Fashion actually tries to progress Yumi's character development. Twins Escape actually is the first time in this series where the sisters make an appearance. Also, Zestin makes a return in this series. Yeah, I, I got a point before I continue about this. Zestin, apparently, here's kind of the strange thing about him. It seems as though after a brief period of time, the guy basically makes very rare appearances, like in the current manga I'm reading, To Love Road Darkness. He made, he made an appearance in one chapter out of, out of what I read so far, 57 chapters. It's almost like though the writer just had him basically there for a bit, and they just drop him. Yeah, they completely drop the guy. Yeah, he gets dramatically reduced. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So... Basically, they have it where, oh, they they apparently, like, go drop a bit. Of course, how they find out they're actually at the Yuki residence is that, oh, they're in the bath for reasons. And they ran in from home. Why? Well, the reason is because they wanted to study about history universe and about the era. So they just ran away. So, Zesta shows up at their place and tries to take it back because they leave. And they sort of, then they sort of get away, and, they, and then sort of play, and they take, and they basically move their own tops, and they play each other. I'm like, what in the world? I mean, is this basically them trying to do each other? No, they're just playing around while also being topless for some some reason. And apparently, these two love playing with their own tails. Like, have Nana play with Momo's tail, and Momo plays with Nana's tail. In a very sexual way. I'm like, what the heck is this? Oh, by the way, yes, this is from the manga. When this was like, yeah, and they're basically, he's like embarrassed of that because the twin, the younger daughters of his king are basically topless right in front of him. So, instead of going back, they just tell their father, hey, we're going to stay on Earth for a while, so don't worry about us. And, of course, he says, you fool, and that's it for that. Yeah, kind of a weird way to end, but at least they, at least they established, though, like, 
a reason for them being here. And they're probably going to be here for pretty much the rest of this series. And they're in pretty much the next manga, too. Though the next manga has got nudity in, like, almost every... Pretty much every chapter. Like, wow, there is so much nudity in, like, Tulabu Darkness. This series, there's some nudity, not a lot. But it's basically mild compared to Tulabu Darkness. But I'll get to that eventually. Mm hmm Yep, but not much else to say about these four episodes. They're pretty good. And I'm probably going to do something like this, basically discussing these segments. Because they're just quick segment things. And, well, that's going to be it for that. So, expect to see two more videos of this discussing Matsu's Love Rue before I get to True Love Rue Darkness. Yep, so, that's it for Sigla Review. My next review will be a review of a Comic Corner. Discussing the last two trades of Rob Venditti's run for Green Lantern. Okay, see you next video. Bye.